book. Okay. So give me one second here. Starting the broadcast to Facebook now. And I'm going to be live with you in just a second for those tuning in on YouTube uh, and Facebook. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson. My name is Sami Abu Saad. I am Director of Education at T3 Live. And I am actually doing, um, we are, I'm in the middle of a, a coaching session for the Strategic Day Trader members. But today I am going to, let me reproject that, I'm going to um, share with you a lesson on candlesticks that uh, will be really important for your success as a trader. While I'm speaking here, I am trying to fix the projector and it's going to take me just one second. We started this lesson, it's a, it's a video series, started, uh, started this lesson last time on the, the, on the weekend. So I'll give you a recap of uh, the lesson, lesson number one, which again we did on the weekend. We said that we use candlesticks, Japanese candlesticks, as opposed to Western bar charts because uh, candlesticks look at the relationship between the the close, the open and the close of a of a, of the same bar ver versus uh, bar charts. Western bar charts look at the relationship between the the today's close versus the prior period's close or yesterday's close. And we said that's not the right way to look at it because if a stock were to gap just like the market today, if the stock if a stock were to gap up here and then spend the whole day selling off to close at the lows and yet it might have closed above yesterday's close, Western thought says this is positive, right? As long as the underlying stock closes higher than the prior day's close, Western thought, thought says this is positive. However, according to the Japanese view, this is not necessarily the case. If on an up day a stock closes below its open, the Japanese would regard it as negative because the Japanese view is that supply and demand is the most important element of technical analysis and on a day like this day, where the stock might have closed lower than where it opened, that means that there was more supply than demand. And that's the most important thing to know when you're looking at charts, is whether there was sup more supply or more demand than supply. Okay, So we exclusively use candlesticks on all of our charts. Now, we also said last time that, you know, People really f overlooked a simple, uh, like a slide like this, where it's a simple lesson that 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 says, you know, if the if the if the candle is green and the stock closed above the open, it means that's bullish. It means the bulls won, right? They overlook something. They overlook the simplicity of this, but the truth is, the understanding candlesticks. And what each, what each candle means is the foundation to technical analysis. So you really, really need to understand candlesticks. We said in the first example here that the bulls were nowhere to be found. We, you know, the stock opened here, closed at the highs. I mean, I'm sorry, the bears were nowhere to be found. So all out bullish. But they weren't battle tested, okay? That's the thing is that maybe there are no bears at all around or maybe they just didn't show up yet. We said number one is bullish but number four is even more bullish because the stock closed at the same price, closed at the absolute high with a bottoming tail, meaning the bulls were actually tested. The bears showed up and the bulls still took them out, crushed them. So those are the two bullish, most bullish candles. Number three and number five are mostly sideways. Big tails on either side of the candle. That means there's a battle going on, but no one group is winning the battle. So mostly sideways. Number two is even though it was a green candle, and if you bought it, if you were in that stock long, you would have actually made money because it closed above where it opened. We say 
this is a bearish candle because of the topping tail. The topping, the topping tail forms, the way it forms is this way. You have this stock opened here, rallied, right? But before the candle had finished forming, the, the bear showed up and forced prices lower to close in the bottom third of the candle. So the bears were the last group in control. That's important, right? That, that's important. But also the bears did a lot of damage. Anybody that bought it, anybody that bought it over here, up here, up here, up here, right, is now underwater, is now sitting on a losing position. So topping tails trap people and they lead, definitely lead to lower prices. They put pressure on the stock. They create selling with, where there was none, right? So this is a bearish candle. I always, I told you to remember how, you know, last time you took a vacation, it might have been the most wonderful vacation, but if you had an issue at the end of the vacation where you missed your flight, you had some kind of an accident, you're never going to look back at that vacation and say, oh, that was a wonderful vacation. Because the last part of it is always the most important. And that, and it's the same in trading and technical analysis. The last part of it is the most important, most relevant. The set of red candles here is the same as green, but in opposite direction, obviously. So bearish, right? So number seven is bearish plus battle tested. So number seven is more bearish than number six, presumably. Eight and 10, mostly sideways, neutral. And number nine, even though it was a red candle, meaning the stock opened here at the top, closed here, the bulls were in control towards the end and they forced prices to close near the top. So that's actually a bullish candle. At the bottom, the body of the candle is black, meaning there were no, uh, meaning it opened and closed at exactly the same price. But the two candles here at the bottom are the complete opposite. One is a bottoming tail, which is very, very bullish. One is a topping tail, which is very, very bearish. We also said that number one, the first candle, is you have to know how it formed. Did it form after on the smaller time frames? So if you want to know how this candle really formed, check the smaller time frames. Did it form after multiple bars up, like so, which leads to exhaustion? Or did it form like so, by breaking out perhaps and then going sideways or by going sideways and then breaking out. So in order to really understand how the first candle formed this wide range bar, you have to look at the smaller time frame. The bottoming tail always, almost always forms the same way. You get the red bars and then the red bars get reversed. The faster the, the reversal is, the quicker it happens, the more bullish it is because it, it leaves people with not much time to, to exit. It traps people. Whereas if it does it, if it goes up slowly like so, then people have enough, plenty of time to exit. But when it happens really quickly, then they get trapped. So bottoming tails also, if you want to understand how important, how strong they are, you have to look at the, uh, at the smaller time frames. Um, now, in this lesson, I'm going to talk about we're going to talk about wide range bars. We're going to talk about, um, I think, the reversal and the potency of reversals. We'll talk about that next time. But in this lesson, we'll talk about, let's, let's actually, oops, um, let's go here. So in today's lesson, part two, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about narrow range bars. We're going to talk about topping, bottoming tails, and we're going to talk about wide range bars. Again, do not overlook or disregard this information i know it's simple it's not sexy for sure um, but it is really the foundation all else is built upon okay and narrow bodies narrow range bars and narrow bodies bars in which the body of the candle is small relative to the overall length of the candle they may have tails on either side of the body while there are different variations, the message is always the same. A slowing in momentum has occurred. Okay, so you might say, well, that's not that important. Slowing in momentum has occurred. But stick with me for a few more minutes, okay? 
Stick with me for a few more minutes. We're going to talk about this in more detail. Wide range bars, a bar in which the candle's body is relatively wide, this, that's a wide range bar. Those two are wide range bars, considered. Um, compared to the most recent bars. So a bar in which the candle's body is relatively wide compared to the most recent bars. The rule is they have to be uh, at least one and a half times the average sized bar. Again, at least one and a half times the average sized bar. A wide range bar after a period of low volatility, sideways base, ignites momentum in that direction. We call that a professional igniting bar. That's a brand new breakdown which should lead to lower prices. However, a wide range bar after an extended sell-off, after an extended advance or decline, typically happens near the end of the move because that, in this case, the wide range bar signals the exhaustion, right? It signals the panic. So why do we get a wide range bar after multiple red bars in a row? Because people are panicking out of the trade. That's why. Why do we get a wide range bar after the stock is up a lot and then you get a wide range bar? Because people can't take the pain of not being in it anymore and so they jump in. For example, the you know we had a few climber plays today in the room. Uh, I personally did the VIAB. See this? Why did the stock start, start printing wide range bars? VIAB, because people started getting really greedy. So when I see that the stock is up a lot and prints wide range bars, I'm looking to fade it. How am I looking to fade it? Here it is. A narrow body signals the turn. I got the narrow body short under the, the bars low. Does that make sense? This was a trade that was called and played in the strategic day trader room today. Not, this, not just this, but I didn't do it. Um, my co-moderator did it. I actually found the trade, but Mark called it. Here it is, ZS. It wasn't. It didn't print any wide range bars, but it had the reversal bar, that narrow body, that narrow range bar in this case, and so that was a climb or short also. How about the CRTO? I, I didn't do the CRTO either, because uh, it's a foreign company, it's a French company, and and there's some brokers, some clearing firms, add a tax on it, so on the transaction so I, that's why I didn't do it but it bounced okay bounced a good amount uh, notice it didn't print a wide range bar so it wasn't as good or as clean clear clean clear as the VIAB and that's ultimately why I did the VIAB short okay so wide range bars there are two uses for wide range bars one is to ignite to start new trends and the other use is to signal the end which one of the two do you think is more useful and strategic day traders, we are in the coaching session right now. Feel free to also type in your answers. This is for you as much as it is for the Facebook and the YouTube people. Which which of the two wide range bars is more useful to us as traders? The igniting wide range bar or the, the exhaustion, the wide range bar that signals the end? Which one is more useful usually? Come on, guys. You know it. Strategic day traders, you know it. Anybody want to participate? The, yes, of course, the one that signals the end, exactly. Took you guys a second, and now you're all typing the same answer. Yes, the one that signals the end, because the one that signals the, the start of the move, if you're not in it here when it was still a small bar, let's just say you didn't get in it here, you can't get in it there. It's already too late. But what you can do is look for the next entry, which was right here. Short, stop right there. That's it, called a sell setup. So does that make sense? So the igniting is not very useful unless you get a secondary entry right here. But what if it actually, what if the stock dropped and just continued? Then it was of no use to you because it, it's gone. Whereas the exhaustion bar happens, you, you, you don't, you, when you see it, you still have the time to get in because you're actually going against it. You're fading it. So for sure, uh, the, the exhaustion bar is more important. So now you learned something really important about wide range bars, which are called the footprints of money, which are basically the sign of big money going into a stock. 
and and that is they either ignite start new trends or they end old ones okay now what else did you learn we also learned that narrow range bars usually form after wide range bars which signal the turn if it's an exhaustion wide range bar then that you want to play long above it above the narrow range bar think of a narrow range bar as a car driving and trying to make a u-turn you gotta slow down to be able to make a u-turn does that make sense so here when this stock was trying to make a u-turn it had to slow down so it printed the narrow range bar when it doesn't print a narrow range bar and just goes like this big red bar then you you can't get in it so we usually look for narrow range bars after exhaustion bars so they can give us the entry entry right here stop right here entry right here which was 20 29 11 right stop right here which was 29 33 i believe see this 29 11 29 33 because i took this trade okay now when it's an igniting bar we also look for narrow range bars because you can do the one two three igniting doji bar or narrow range bar and then you can do a one two three if it breaks under it in this case we did kind of get a narrow range bar but it didn't break under it went higher which was fine because it gave us a cell setup all right okay so moving on topping tails normal or wide range bars in which prices had been higher then supply forced prices to close below the midpoint of the bar's range so now we learned at least one new thing about topping tails and that is topping tails a bar is not considered a topping tail bar unless the tail makes up at least 50 percent of the candle size so a topping tail is only valid if it is if it makes up at least 50 percent of the candle size while there are different variations the message is always the same distribution has occurred distribution means selling has occurred and overhead supply has been increased why is that why do you think overhead supply has be, had been increased anybody why do topping tails increase supply what the hell does that mean anybody the most and then the other thing i want you to know is the most potent tails will also be will have a wider range than prior bars will also be wide range so it's a wide range bar from top to bottom is also a big bar the bigger the tail the bigger the the more resistance the more supply okay it increased supply the topping tail actually increases supply for the reason that we discussed earlier the topping tail the way it forms is the stock is moving up and then all of a sudden gets slammed sorry if i scared your cats and dogs but you get the point it's moving up nice and easy and then gets slammed so people get caught so all of the people that bought it on the way up now here are gonna be underwater so they're gonna be looking to sell the stock especially if it starts to break down these people were probably just just entered they weren't looking to sell it so there there wasn't supposed to be any supply here but the topping tail actually created new supply where none existed before so that's why we say overhead supply has been increased does that make sense that's why we say overhead supply has been increased and the bigger the tail the bigger the, the supply bottoming tails are the same but in reverse normal or wide range bars in which prices had been lower then demand forced prices to close above the midpoint of the bars range while there are different variations the message is always the same accumulation has occurred and demand has been created because the shorts anybody that shorted is now trapped the shorts are going to look to cover so new demand has been created and the most potent bottoming tail bars will also have wider range than normal and those are called range expansion if a bar if a bottoming or a topping tail bar has above average range at least one and a half times the size of the average bar it's called a range expansion bottoming or topping tail and that my friends is the single strongest reversal sign you can get
It's the strongest reversal bar that you can get. Now, narrow range, a narrow range bar or narrow body is a bar, uh, a narrow body bar is a more reliable indication of a turn after a wide range bar. It's only reliable when you actually have a turn. When you have, if it happens after multiple bars down, down three or more usually, especially if the last bar was a wider range. So the difference between a narrow range or a narrow body is a narrow range meaning from top to bottom the range is very narrow. Narrow body means the the body is narrow but the range is not necessarily narrow. It's average. This one is what I call the battle bar because it signals that there's a battle going on. A narrow range bar, a bar that is smaller than normal, doesn't really signal much of a battle. So I like the ones that have big tails on either side with a narrow body. Those are my favorite reversal bars. Okay, my favorite reversal bars. So uh, continuing on, we were on this slide. Without an increase in volatility, odds of a, of a reversal from a narrow range bar are slim to none. A narrow range bar, in essence, means low volatility. So unless you have an increase in volatility and the U-turn, that narrow range bar or narrow body, it's meaningless, really. It just means a slowing in momentum. Wide range bar. A wide range breakout or breakdown after a consolidation ignites a move in that direction. A wide range red bar followed by a wide range green bar and vice versa are powerful reversal signals. These are called uh, these are called bull or bear sandwiches. So a wide range red bar reversed completely completely by a wide range green bar. That's a really bullish signal. Or a wide range green bar completely negated by a wide range red bar. Very very potent. Range expansion we talked about them. The bottoming tail or topping tail may or may not be a range expansion. It needs to be a wide range. It needs to be wide range in order for it to be called an RE bar, a range expansion bar. A wide range bar or a range expansion bar displays commitment and emotions, right? A lot of people committed to the stock. Went, you know, a lot of people committed a lot of money usually. So it may, it, it shows the level of commitment and. Um, and of course emotions. Um, we said wide range bars serve two purposes. They either signal the end of the move if they happen after multiple bars down or multiple bars up. See this in the right on the right side of the, the, the page. So they signal the end, the exhaustion, expanding range after a multi-bar move indicates fear or greed is increasing and becoming extreme, increasing the odds of a reversal. And that's the most useful thing about wide range bars. But they can also ignite when you have a wide range bar that starts at the beginning and then you have small bars at the end. What does that mean? It means momentum is slowing, but fear is not extreme, which means we should still continue lower. So check this out. Here, if you were to ask me, should are we going to continue lower? I'd say probably not, but we're probably going to get a reversal. If you were to ask me, are we going to continue lower? I would say momentum is slow, but we should continue lower eventually at least because there's no exhaustion. There's no panic. We didn't get a wide range bar. Does that make sense? So momentum is slow, but it's not it, that you don't, you don't, trends don't reverse for no reason. The trends typically continue. So trends don't reverse unless we get a wide range bar usually. So without a wide range bar, the odds are with the trend, not against it. And the same here, right? The same here. Greed is not extreme, right? Fear is not extreme. Whereas here, greed is extreme. And so it's easy to, to get a reversal and then a playable reversal, actually. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. This, is, this was done in the coaching room and broadcast live to Facebook and YouTube. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Um, we have an incredible offer going on where you can trade with us for 30 days for just 49 bucks. You can check out the room where you can expect this level of knowledge, this level of education, and much more of course. And you can uh, expect to get plenty of calls every day 
uh, I was telling the, the, the students in the coaching room that it's uh, my job as a, <laughs> as a room uh, moderator uh, is to showcase uh, you guys the uh, methodology that I trade and what we do in the room. But I, I have a hard time um, doing it because I'm not a sales guy by nature and I have to compete against all these scams out there unfortunately but uh, what you find if you join the, the the room the strategic day trader room is that we're we're the real deal okay we're real traders with real knowledge as you can tell and we hold nothing back so highly encourage you to take advantage it's only 49 bucks it's basically free if you ask me 49 dollars for 30 days and you get uh, all the plays the ideas, the watches, you get to be part of a room with uh, incredible education, incredible community, and you get to be part of the best trading room. We won the award for being the best trading room two years in a row when Trader Planet was running that contest, which was voted on by the trading public. So again, hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I will talk to you on the next video. Have a good night, everyone.